Hi everyone. So I have my 2015 beauty favorites and I probably am going to throw in a couple of like December favorites. Things that I've been enjoying that I'd like to mention but that aren't exactly like a whole year tried and true favorite. So I'm going to do my the December favorites really quickly. Uh, this Pixie by Petra Glow Mist. So it has an oil in it and when you shake it up it obviously becomes more combined. So what I like about this one is it's a, a facial mist that's actually hydrating that I can see a difference. Um, things like Fix Plus might look make my skin look less dry briefly, but it doesn't last. This I feel like actually can, if I really spray it on, um, it can make my skin look actually a little bit more glowy. Um, I do generally try to not get it on my nose and my chin. It does seem to affect the wear time of foundation, though I've experienced that with any sort of facial mist spray, setting spray, whatever. They all seem to kind of negatively impact the wear on my oily areas. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying this for actually adding a little bit of um, glow and make this area especially look a little less dry. So that's been kind of neat to use lately. Um, CoverGirl, the Super Sizer Mascara. I don't think I would go out on a limb and say this is a, a 2015 favorite, but I would say it's a December favorite. It's got that funky little wand. Uh, it's what I have on my lashes today. It builds nicely. It kind of separates. It adds a fair amount of volume. The more I use this, I'm not sure if it really replaces uh, Clump Crusher as my kind of standby. I might buy another tube of it and see how I feel about it. Um, also, this this could be a 2015 favorite, but mm, this is the Sephora uh, Super, no, Waterproof Eye Makeup Remover, the makeup eraser, it says. So it's not oil-free, I don't believe. I think it has oil, actual oil in it which is fine with me, um, but it takes off eye makeup really, really easily. Now I never like remove like this. I would not start with this. I wash my face first and then I'll go in and do cleanup with something like this. And this just takes it off so fast and so easily with no rubbing, no nothing. And it doesn't irritate my eyes. Um, the Neutrogena oil-free uh, makeup remover, eye makeup remover that everybody likes the, is the Too Faced. That actually make, made my under eye area peel. So uh, yeah, <laughs> my uh, under eyes tend to be very dry and kind of sensitive. So really enjoying this and I think I may actually buy this. This is like a deluxe sample size. I got in one of those like sample bags that was a code around the holiday time enjoying that quite a lot. So let's see, is there anything else? I think that's everything that was just like specific to 2015. So, or no, specific to December. So I do want to, I have a lot of stuff here. So let me just get started with minimum jibber jabber. The CeraVe PM uh, Facial Moisturizing Lotion. This is my second or third bottle of it. I really like how this absorbs. Uh, it's just a super nice light moisturizer. I wouldn't say dry skin could use it as, you know, the only moisturizer, but definitely is a nice layer in addition to other things for drier skin and nice for normal skin. Also a variety of Paula's Choice uh, SPF. This is the Hydrolyte uh, Shine Free Daily Mineral Complex SPF 30. I like this one a lot. I also like the Moisture Rescue SPF 30. I think it's 30. Those are the two that I've been using the most lately. Um, when my T-zone is more oily, I go with this and then maybe put a hydrating primer on my cheeks. And um, if my all my face was feeling a little bit drier than I go with the Moisture Rescue. So just been really liking those. I guess we'll just continue with the face type products. Um, the Hourglass Veil Primer, I did buy this in the two ounce jumbo size. Um, this keeps, this as part of a like 
face sandwich, um, which I made a video about how I can get 14 hours of wear out of my foundation. Um, this is one of the important steps. So yeah, this keeps my foundation on my nose as long as I follow a very specific combination of products um, for 14 hours, which is unheard of. Normally, the oil on my nose breaks down makeup really, really fast, you know, within four hours, at most like maybe six hours. So this has made a huge difference to my routine. So that's been pretty awesome to be able to put on my makeup and then be done. So the the next step in the face sandwich, <laughs> the Lancome Tay Idol Ultra, and this is in 90 Ivory N. It's a little bit dark, it's a little peach, so it's not the perfect color for me, but it doesn't settle into my pores, and it doesn't look super matte despite being a matte uh, foundation. It says it's matte, but it's not, it's not super, super dry looking matte. Um, and it wears amazingly. So what I use to correct the color of this and other things are these Makeup Forever a Chromatic Mix pigments. Makeup liquid pigments, they say. So I have an oil base of white and a water base of yellow. And these are awesome. So today I, and I may insert little clips of me putting this makeup on today where I used a bunch of these products. I don't know. It depends how much time that takes in editing. <laughs> if it's not going to be till 2017, that <laughs> then that's not going to happen. Um, just for reference, so I have a two and a half year old and a newborn. So my um, time right now is extremely limited because I can't do stuff like this, editing or recording when my toddler is awake. So, and then the rest of the time that he's asleep, the newborn is awake, so it's tricky. So I really appreciate you sticking with me while my video's frequency goes down. Oh my gosh, I'm really trying to not talk too much. Anyway, so these are really great they're not too expensive, which I appreciate. It is a very small amount of product, but you're not using a whole lot. And I'd rather, I guess I'd rather just repurchase a small amount of something like this than buy the entire bottle of white foundation. And it doesn't really do exactly what I want or it gets older. And so it starts sitting on my skin kind of funny, which is a problem I tend to have. So yes, today I have this and these together to get a little bit more of a yellow tone that is then light enough for my face. So I've been really, it's kind of opened up what I can buy as far as face products go. So for example, I've been wearing this, the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous. I feel like it works really quite well for me formula wise, but the 105 shade is too dark. So I just add some white to it and then it's a better match. It's not yellow enough, but it's, you know, better than, better than this straight out of the tube, <laughs> obviously. So what I, another favorite, um, some of these are favorites from previous years and some of these are kind of newly found this year. Any sort of makeup sponge like a beauty blender, this is the only way I can get, consistently get a uh, foundation to not settle into my pores and look good. So this is a huge component of my routine. I can kind of pat things in with my fingers, but it's definitely a lot more time consuming and it's hit or miss sometimes, especially just on my nose. It is so hard to get makeup to look good on my nose. Even with a beauty blender, sometimes I have trouble. I also really enjoy the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. I have one in waiting. I bought a two pack with a cleanser for the beauty blender. Um, I'm not sure. I think I might sort of like the Real Techniques better. I've been using the Beauty Blender for a while, so I need to bust out the Real Techniques sponge and, and see how I feel about it, you know, more side by side. But definitely like the Real Techniques one, and it is so much cheaper. 
So the last step in the makeup sandwich is some sort of loose setting powder. So today I used the Sonia Kashuk uh, brightening powder and this has little teeny tiny sparkles in it, which I don't love. So that's why I don't wear this one all the time. What I had been using was the Laura Mercier uh, loose setting powder and translucent that was part of an undercover pot, which is uh, concealer and then the powder underneath. And I finished that. And um, what I repurchased, I found that the brightening powder works the same as that loose setting powder. And I think what is important for me, as far as the oil control goes, is that um, the first ingredient is talc. And I know a lot of people um, avoid that product or it irritates their skin or whatever. So the, just keep that in mind. But um, what I bought to replace is the Derma Blend um, setting powder. And this is original. So it's the translucent type, though, yeah, I think so. Pretty sure. Um, I considered buying something from the drugstore, but um, I decided to go ahead and get the 20% off. I think at Ulta I bought this one. So yeah, just some sort of talc-based setting powder that's very finely milled. And that keeps makeup on my face. And I'll link to any videos that are relevant below, like my foundation routine video. Oh, I did also want to mention, now this formula doesn't work that well for me, but it was kind of eye-opening that the NARS Sheer Glow in Siberia is a really good color match for me. And that was something that I didn't know that I'd ever find. And it made me realize how much yellow I do need in foundations um, to really match up with my neck. And so I am trying to get this to wear better for me just because the color is so nice. Um, but this does get very dewy, shiny um, after about four hours, and it does kind of move off my nose a little bit more. But since my skin's all cattywampus because I just had a baby, you know, my skin changes a bunch while I'm pregnant, and then it takes back, and so who knows where it's going to end up. Oh, this this could all. I think this might be a 2015 favorite. The Sephora uh, Micro Smooth Baked Powder, and this is in Light 05 Porcelain. This is like a MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural, but this lasts so much better for me, and it's... <laughs> I know there's another thing that I really liked about it, but I can't remember what. But the lasting powder is way better. Oh, and the coverage, the coverage is better as well. So that is a really nice powder and this is very light. So I think this is lighter than the light uh, MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural, which I find to be a little bit dark for me and I think it also oxidizes a little. Yeah, so that was an awesome replacement. I'm really glad, I am really glad I took a chance on that one. Okay, so to finish up with some face products. I don't think this is going to be too much of a surprise since I'm sure it's featuring in a lot of people's favorites and that's a Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector. This is a pressed one and it's in Moonstone and oh, it seems like there's a little crack in this. Mm, that's something to look out for. I am wearing this today on my cheeks a little bit in this area. <laughs> really really like the color like the finish you have to be careful because it can get way overboard really fast but really really like that and i've been so happy that i went ahead and bought that full size um okay brows i just you know i really enjoy brows so my favorite favorite which i don't have out here is the brow dye that I use. It's not perfect. It brow it, it dyes them a little bit more black and they kind of fade out to a little bit more of a brown. Um, but the Godfrey, Godfrey tint kit in medium, I do have a video on how I do that. That is kind of the star product because my brows are not dyed right now <laughs> and they need to be. My favorite brow pencil has been the Studio Gear in 
brow definer in medium ash. This is on my use it up list. I will try to do an update video for you sometime soon, but this is obviously getting quite low and I've really, I'm glad that I put that on my use it up list because I really have been enjoying using it. It's a really kind of ashy color. It doesn't go too um, warm, which is really tricky on my skin tone. Things tend to go very orange. So also tinted brow gels for kind of ease of use and multi-purpose use. That would be the new one, Eric. Paula's Choice Brow Hair Tint. It has a different kind of wand. And I like this for root cover up as well as in my brows. It's a very taupey shade. And you don't have to like scrape off the wand a bunch to use it. So I like that one a lot. And I've been using this more often, which is the Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel in Brunette. This is also on my use it up list, but the only way I can use this without it driving me nuts, and I was super reluctant to do it for a long time, but I finally just decided I'm never gonna finish it any other way. When I take the wand, the, see, you'll see, I'm sure you know what this brush looks like, but it's crazy. It puts a ton of product on your brows and it's just so hard to control. So I take a paper towel, and wipe off the brush, like totally wipe it. And that way, and that's what I have on my brows today, I can just get a very realistic amount of product on my brows without them looking like really globby and thick and having way too much and it getting on my skin and everywhere. So yeah, if you have this and you don't use it because the wand is driving you crazy, just try, you know, wiping it off. <laughs> It's obnoxious, but I really do like the effect once I do that. Um, okay, we'll stay in the eye region. Um, matte palettes. I've had three kind of in my vanity the, for the year plus past several months. Um, I think, yeah, I've had this one the longest and it's the Pure Minerals uh, Soul Mattes palette. And the reason I really like this, because the these colors aren't kind of everyday colors for me, except for that brow bone highlight. I don't know, you can see I have a pretty big dip in there. So I really enjoy this as a brow bone highlight. And then if I'm looking for a really warm crease color, this has an, a lot of nice options. But I definitely use that kind of ivory shade the most. And then another matte palette that I got this year that I've really, really liked is the Naked Basics palette. I had kind of resisted for a long time because I thought the highlight shade was not light enough for me, um, which I would say Venus isn't, it's okay. I do wish it was a matte um, to really be a good highlight for me, but it is nice having kind of a shimmery, um, but not super metallic um, highlight color that I can use in my inner corner and that kind of thing. But what I really like, are the, this color, which is a uh, walk of shame. Yeah, W-O-S. I like this kind of as a transition into the crease color. It can be a very super subtle crease color for me, um, but I use it just as kind of I throw down that in the crease first, and then maybe I go in with tease to make it a little bit deeper or a little bit deeper with, um, not tease, <laughs> naked too, which is the taupey color. And then I might even deepen it up a little bit more with Faint, the darker brown. And I really enjoy those two also on the lower lash line, which is what I have today, which gives me a little bit more definition. And then I can kind of blend it out with the WOS. I just have found a lot of uses for that, for this palette, and I've really, really enjoyed it. And then another matte palette that I keep in my vanity, the last one is the Sonia Kashuk Ion Neutrals Matte Palette. I feel like this just has a ton of crease colors that I really like. And it has deeper colors, it has highlights. This really light, kind of almost white, but not quite white cream shade. I love that for my brow bone or inner corner. I just really like these. I really like this palette quite a lot. So I've been using all of those a lot and I just keep them in my vanity and then I pull whatever other palettes that I might want for, you know, these are just kind of add-ons in general. This one definitely I can do a whole eye look without, you know, making any sort of compromise. Um, the other two I'm less likely to use for a whole look, but 
Really enjoying those. I don't think he's going back to sleep and I don't think anybody's gonna go in there and get them unless I go get them. So I guess I need to take a break from this video and go fetch my sweet little boy, baby. <laughs> mm. That is really uneven. All right, so <laughs> the baby woke up, of course. He took like half an hour nap, so I fed him and now uh, my husband's gonna give him the bottle I have to supplement with formula because I only make about half of what he needs. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I have, I have a really long blog post about that if you want to know the details. But basically we've tried everything, so yeah. Anyway, um, so my husband's going to take care of him for a little bit so I can finish my video. Hopefully I remember where I was. Um, I stuff. So, I was so not expecting to like these or to be as enamored as I was, but, um, ColourPop. So, when this kind of, like, exploded in the online beauty community, I was rather, um, skeptical, skeptical, I guess, just because it seemed like I mean, they did good marketing. They sure got their product out there, but it felt like super oversaturated. So that really did put me off. So I took quite a while to try this. I think maybe Temptalia's reviews saying how good they were, I think that helped kind of push me over the edge. So the shadows are awesome. Really, really, really awesome. The only thing that makes me kind of concerned is that since it is kind of a cream format that they're going to dry out quickly. That would be my concern and they're in these little plastic pots that you know if you over tighten them you have to worry about breaking the pot that kind of thing. But oh, I love many things. So I can wear these without a primer and they won't crease or fade throughout the day, which is amazing. I don't have any other cream or powder shadows that do that. Um, the glitter shades, I can wear glitter easily. It, I don't have fallout as long as you don't like blend where the glitter is, but that's I think kind of the case for everything. Um, this Glitterati shade, it's such a neat topper, kind of glittery topper. Love it. Love it. Um, I also have, I had bought the Forever Freshman set. I think that's the one that uh, Temptalia reviewed really well, and so that's kind of where I dove in um, with the shadows. Oh, nice. <laughs> I love that this shade, uh, 90210, so it has the really tiny kind of sparkles that you might see in something like um, Nars Galapagos, but they actually show up on your lids when you put it on. And so I found the easiest way to apply the things that I want full super intensity, like I have Koosh on my lids today, kind of really put on with a finger. That's the best way. And for the glitter, that's the best way to apply it. It's just kind of tap it on with your finger. Or you can kind of blend it onto your lid with your finger as a but you don't want to go in there with a brush because that will make the glitter go Poof. but I mean that's all glitter shadows do that the matte shadows I had heard not so great things about the matte shadows but I really like the mattes and they work really well with a brush so that's really nice so yeah I've just been super super happy with the ColourPop shadows now this is kind of like a favorite and a failure all at the same. And these are the eyeliners. So I love the color and the formula of Crybaby. I have it in my waterline, my bottom waterline. I love wearing it there. Love it. But these came broken. So this is not connected to the mechanism. So I have to be super careful opening them, otherwise they go flying, the product goes flying. Both of the liners that I got are like this. I also really love the color of this one. I had been looking for a burgundy eyeliner for quite some time and there just aren't many burgundy eyeliners. And I was so excited when they came out with this 
range because they had a burgundy eyeliner in this format in the pencil and they all have also the kind of gel color so I bought both of those both both types I also bought Zulu in the pot which is kind of a greenish mint and I've only tried that as a base once I've got to try it again because I know that they don't work that well as a base so I need to I have worn it in my waterline a couple times and I like that but what I really bought it for was that like mint shadow base um, yeah, so really like the liners, and I hate that the mechanical liners are completely busted and came busted. It's so disappointing. Um, something I don't think I mentioned. This is um, a favorite from a while back. The NARS Light Reflecting Setting Powder Pressed Translucent Crystal. So you can see I've used quite a lot of this. It's this whole compact is so messy. <laughs> I hate this type of rubbery packaging. And then on the inside it's a mess and yeah. So I don't find this works too well for me for setting my face makeup, <laughs> but under the eyes it's the best. It keeps my concealer from creasing and it doesn't make it look super dry. Though today I feel like my under eyes are looking pretty dry, but I think that's just because I didn't, I've been using different products there and whatever. I was experimenting a little, um, but otherwise just love that powder. Let's see, I think I'm almost done here. Almost done. A survey my stuff. Oh, and I really, I mean, this is not available anymore, but it really is a favorite. This is one of the Sonia Kashuk brushes. Um, I use this for the setting powder, and what's nice is that it's dense enough that it can kind of blend out any little bits that are actually creased before, like if I didn't go in and tap them out and then put the powder on, this, because it's dense enough, will kind of blend it out as I put the powder on, so I really appreciate that. And another brush that I really, really like, and I, I wish I had bought it earlier. I had thought about it for quite some time, but I just recently bought it. The It Cosmetics Airbrush Precision Smudger number 124. This is just like just the right level of resistance for me. I can use it in my crease, and what I really bought it for was my lower lash line. My lower lash line is super sensitive and almost all brushes I use feel like kind of pokey and jabby and this one is just really the right size for me it does what I want I really like using this with that um, naked two and faint was it to the dark brown just I really enjoy this brush uh, let's see So I think lips are all that's left. So matte lipstick, still loving it. I think that was a yearly favorite last year as well. Still loving the Maybelline Creamy Mattes and still loving especially these two, the Daringly Nude and Nude Embrace. Um, the, the video of me putting my makeup on today, I wore uh, Nude Embrace. And I feel like it's just a really good color for me. It's a good nude color. It's very kind of um, on the orange side. It's just a really good color. It's a great formula. I love it. And the lip liner that I feel like is a super good match for it. And I think I think I found the lip liner first. The Rimmel Exaggerate Lip Liner in Innocent. This is my second second or third one of these. So you don't get a ton of product, so it does go pretty fast. Um, I'm getting kind of low here. I'd say I've used about half of this one, but I do, I just like the color so much. I, it's, it does stick around pretty well because it's quite sticky. Um, I don't love how sticky it is, but it does last pretty well because it's sticky. So I appreciate that, but I do, I would, be happy if I could find another drugstore lip liner that was similar that lasted maybe not as well but better than some that I have but that was less sticky just because I do like to fill in my lips with it sometimes and that can be a little bit of an unpleasant situation like um, yeah 
Mm -hmm. It just doesn't feel so great when your lips feel like they're kind of gluing together and popping open. All right, so last last thing I believe, and this is just kind of a a non makeup favorite, and it's a Kitty Perry perfume. So I had. I think like in an Ulta catalog or something, there was one of the little paper samples of K Katy Perry's Killer Queen. And surprisingly, I liked it. If you would ask me maybe five years ago, I would say no way to sweet fragrances, but something changed and I enjoy sweet fragrances right now. And this one is just, I get this kind of cloud of caramel kind of scent throughout the day and that's what I really like about it. Um, I just really like this and when in doubt I want to wear this even though I have a ton of like samples to choose from and a few full size. I always go back to this. Um, I have it in my hair today. I kind of limit my fragrance use around like a new newborn because I don't want to put them off nursing if like my shirt smells too much or my skin like on my hands is it, whatever. So I try to keep it a little bit further away from them. So I do put this in my hair and that way I can smell it and hopefully it's not too much for for the baby oh, yeah I just I really this it makes me happy it really makes me happy and I believe I bought this in the winter I think of last year and I don't know I just have very pleasant kind of scent memories associated with it so I think that's it. I think that's everything for my 2015 favorites along with a few kind of random uh, December favorites. So let me know what you were really loving this year. Um, if you've tried any of these, how they worked out for you. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.